Africa is home to roughly 13% of the world's population. There are about a billion or so of us around this continent. But we only account for a tiny fraction of global air travel. Uh, we account for barely 2% of total passenger traffic, at least going by last year's numbers. Now, the International Air Transport Association pointed out that if just 12 economies, 12 on the continent, fully opened up their airspace, it could add about $1.3 billion to the collective GDP. But doing this has been something countries on the continent have said repeatedly that they want to do, but so far they really haven't gone around to doing it. Now, one reason why Africa's contribution to global air traffic is so low is the fact that ticket prices relative to income are incredibly high. By IASA's calculations out today, in fact, it estimates that the cost of uh, a return ticket is roughly equivalent to three weeks' worth of national income. And that's just for a ticket, a return ticket, within the continent of Africa. Now then, the latest effort to open up Africa's skies is a single air transport market. Let's explore what that entails and why it's still so expensive to fly around Africa with Abderrahman Berthe. He's the Secretary General of the African Airlines Association. He's with me in studio tonight. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address your audience this uh, evening. On, on uh, aviation issues. <laughs> yeah, it's something we love talking about on this program anyway. But let's, let's start with the Amosukra Declaration. Okay. Signed around the year 2000, a lot of drama and hype around it. But here we are, 2019, it's still not really in effect. And yet now we hear there's this effort to have the single transportation, air transportation market in Africa. So if Yamusukro didn't work, why will this new initiative work? Because the single uh, African air transport market is different from uh, the Yamusukro Declaration, which was signed uh, in 1988 followed by the de decision in 1999. Yeah. The SATAM was uh, launched uh, one year ago in Addis Ababa. The difference is that now we have an executive agency uh, with the power to implement the liberalization. We also have a legal framework. We have uh, consumer protection rules. We have a uh, competition rules and a dispute settlement uh, mechanism. And uh, we have also an action plan for the implementation of the single air African air transport market involving all stakeholders of the industry. So essentially, SATAM builds on what we learned from not implementing Yamasukro, for lack of a better word. Yes, uh, you, you, you are right. There was no legal framework to enforce the implementation of uh, the Yamasukro decision. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a legal framework and uh, we have so far 28 states which commit to uh, uh, implement the SATAM. Right. But what about, what about the question of bilateral, the, the fragmentation of the African aviation market? Because if one country, say for example, Kenya Airways wants to fly into Cameroon, for argument's sake, you've got to sign a bilateral air service agreement, agree on who can fly what, where, when and how, what are the frequencies of flights and so on and so forth. When you say you have this common executive body that will say, okay, here's what the fifth freedom rights, well, third all the way to fifth freedom rights, are going to be for all participating member states, how does that work in practice? So they all have to adopt laws within their own constitutions, within their own parliaments or whatever, to essentially implement those? Yes, in fact, the bilateral air service agreement uh, uh, come up just after the Second World War. Uh, the first one was signed by uh, United States and UK after the, the war, and uh, because uh, you can understand that after the Second World War, uh, the states wanted uh, to have a sovereignty on yeah. their airspace. Mm -hmm. So uh, after that, we realized that uh, being, uh, having many states, it is very difficult uh, to, uh, to, to improve uh, air transport with uh, bilateral air service agreement. It's constraining the uh, relation between airlines. So in many regions, we are moving toward the, a multilateral air service uh, agreement. And in Africa, we are proposing a multilateral air service agreement since last year. It had been adopted in uh, Lome during a ministerial uh, working group. Right. So where do taxes, because a lot of the, the, the reasons why ticket prices in this continent is so high, is you look at the breakdown and taxes, landing fees, takeoff fees, etc. they're so high. So you end up paying as much to fly, say, from Nairobi to Lusaka, or actually Livingstone, which cost me $900 last year. And that's a sort of, it's twice as much as I would pay to go to Dubai. Yes, you are right. Uh, today in Europe, you can fly one hour and a half 
for less than uh, $100. Mm -hmm. In Africa, only the taxes range from 50 to $150. This is uh, uh, quite uh, very high. And Africa is uh, uh, among the high regions in terms of taxes and charges in, uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's uh, 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 critical to bring the level of taxes uh, at a lower level so that uh, we can uh, have uh, uh, fair tickets uh, 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 affordable for the majority of uh, African uh, citizens. But then how do you approach that when you've got a lot of state-owned carriers um, operating across the continent? You've got Ethiopian, who have I mean, the biggest carrier on the continent. Um, you've got Kenya Airways, who's operating here. And one of the main arguments KQ management say when we speak to them is, well, how am I supposed to compete with Ethiopian when I've got to pay all these taxes and landing fees, ETC, ETC, to a government parastatal? How do you bring these two markets into parity? Yes, uh, there is a need to have an economic regulator uh, under the single African air transport market because all operators need to be on a, uh, a fair level so that uh, the co uh, competition uh, could be the same among African airlines. Right. Um, along those lines, again, because here's the thing. I'm, I'm putting myself in your shoes. I'm seeing you negotiating with, say, Rwanda or Tanzania, who invested fairly heavily in their state carriers not too long ago. And here you are saying, well, you guys should actually drop your taxes a bit. But then they would say, yeah, but we're trying to shield our markets here. Right? There, there seems to be a bit of a, <laughs> um, for lack of a better word, you're asking them to forego revenue here, aren't you? Yes, you, you know, um, having high revenue, uh, uh, high taxes and charges is, is not promoting the growth of air transport. If you lower taxes and charges, you have seen that in other regions of the world, in the uh, United States, in Europe, if you lower, you create uh, a, a good condition for air operators, you will grow the traffic, and in overall, the revenue for the states will grow also. Right. So let's let's go back to the commitment question. 28 countries have signed up to this. Have said 28, 28. 28 countries, right. So they've, they've said we're going to implement this uh, single African aviation market. What exactly does that entail? Once I say I've committed to SATAM, what then must I do? There is first a solemn commitment to the single air transport market. After that, you have eight immediate concrete measures that can be, should be implemented by the states. And then does that, do we look at legal changes that also have to be made in order to essentially embed those, uh, the multilateral air service agreements, for example, into local law? Yes, there are some uh, le legal uh, instruments to be enacted also. Uh, the uh, multilateral air service agreement is one part of the immediate concrete measures for the implementation of uh, the SATAM. Right. So many states have already undertaken to implement this eight measure toward the single air trans, uh, uh, African air transport market. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time on this, but thank you very much thank for you. your time. Appreciate thank it. You. Looking forward to seeing what the aviation market looks like in another decade or so. Right then, time for a short break. You're watching Global Business Africa. Here's what's coming up next.